Good greetings, friends and followers. This is Nurses Talking. I am Del Barzi. As always, if you like what you see and hear, subscribe. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Here on Nurses Talking, we speak to nurses anywhere in the world and at any stage in their nursing journey, from students to retirees and anywhere in between. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Jeannie Nagayam. Jeannie is a registered nurse. She was a peer mentor throughout her college years for younger nursing students. She graduated a three-year accelerated nursing program at the age of 20. She pursued a master's in public health degree right after graduating in nursing to possibly open up more opportunities and to see how she could integrate public health and nursing. So welcome, Jeannie. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited and pleased that I get to come here and speak to you and also share some of my thoughts and ideas to everybody. So I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for doing it. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, first of all, what drew you to nursing? Um, I think what drew me to nursing was kind of like, sounds a little bit cliche. I think from a younger age, I was very inclined to help um, others. And I think I just had this nurturing aspect in me where, for instance, I remember my mom would always tell me in second grade when I was at the playground with my friends, I guess we both were on the monkey bars and we both fell and I immediately went to her. We were both bleeding like through our knees. We scraped our knees and I immediately went to her and was like, hey, are you OK? And like tried to grab her a Band-Aid. So I think just from a younger age, I really wanted to kind of seek to help others and make sure that they were okay both on a physical and emotional aspect um mm -hmm. so I would say just also watching my mom take care of her parents it was kind of a very big eye-opener for me where she was always helping them feed them or you know take them to places and helping with their um everyday activities so that also made me kind of realize I want to be there for someone and make sure, you know, ease any of the burdens that they have. So I think that's what kind of rooted and stems the nurturing aspect that I have and why I wanted to um, be a nurse. Mm, all right. So what I'm hearing is that if EA, it was innate and then the environment also nurtured that, your mom. Right. Um, right. Your mom's uh, example actually nurtured mm -hmm. that. So having all of that um, from a very young age, mm -hmm. And coming into, first of all, an, acceler an accelerated, pro accelerated program, mm -hmm. um, what were the challenges for you? Um, I would say that there were a variety of challenges for me. I would say that the challenges were being in a nursing program that was three years, three years was already very difficult because everything was vigorous and just very fast in timeline. So that was something that kind of struck out to me. But another important aspect was COVID. So I was in nursing school at the peak of COVID. Um, around 2020, we had to switch into virtual clinicals. So our clinicals were on our laptops and we would have to film skill sets through Zoom. And I remember being like, am I not experienced? Because in class, you're working directly with a patient or directly with your classmate. But through Zoom, I had to use a teddy bear. So the teddy bear is unable to respond to me. They're unable to tell me what their pain skill is or how they're feeling. So it was a lot of very, it was just very difficult because yeah. I also didn't feel as though I got the perfect example since COVID hit. So, you know, you can only do so much through the camera. You can't really interact with a teddy bear yeah. or a fake model. So that was definitely difficult. Um, and I would also say that another thing was being so young. I think a lot of hardships I faced, especially in the work field, was a lot of patients doubting you or your older nurses looking at you like, hey, they're not as experienced or they graduated so soon. You know, they might not know anything or retain a lot. So mm -hmm. a lot of the things I've dealt with were patients looking at me and being like, oh, are you my nurse? And I'd be like, yep, I'm your nurse today. <laughs> um, <laughs> So those were a lot of things, just being doubted and not um, yeah. attaining yeah. the skills that you would in 
yeah i can that that has to be very 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 difficult attempting mm -hmm. to do that um mm -hmm. as you said you know a, a teddy bear cannot communicate any feelings to you there's there's, there's the, one of the things that's so um necessary in this in this profession is empathy and how do you empathize with a teddy right <laughs> yes so i was just talking to myself but i i made it through so that was that was good yeah, I can see that. You have worked in, in several different areas, mm -hmm. right? And then you settled on cardiology. Yeah. Why? So I've worked in um, inpatient psych. I have was a nursing assistant in the ER and just regular med surge. And I think I wanted to make sure that when I actually became a nurse, I was in a very patient, a diverse patient population. So of course, various health conditions that would allow me to gain the skills that I need to become a stronger nurse, as well as, um, you know, patients of different backgrounds. I wanted to see and be with patients of different ages, different um, health conditions and different nationalities and such. So with that being said, I wanted to make sure that when I got into my actual nursing career, transitioning from a um, nursing assistant to an RN, I wanted to make sure that I had a very strong basis and a strong foundation. So I thought cardiac was the perfect, perfect set for me. It was critical, but I could also probably take some time to learn from the older nurses and see the uh, different cardiology things. Like I work with heart failure, a lot of end stemmies, a lot of those type of mm. things. Um, I think it being cardiology, that's where a lot of our, you know, our blood flow and everything. Yeah, is yeah. From. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that basically was what stemmed um, yeah. me wanting to yeah. be in cardiac initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ca cardiology, I guess, is well, uh, most things are, but it, I guess that that's an equal opportunity offender. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, like that. in patient psych, I'd say it helped me learn a lot of like emotional skills and being there communication mm -hmm. wise, but I felt as though I wanted to work more hands on. Mm -hmm. And then in the ER, it was a little bit too fast paced for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I kind of got, I mean, cardiology, I think is a mix of everything. Every nursing field is a yeah. mix of everything, but yeah. I that it would allow me to um, have a strong foundation so that moving forward, I could kind of use those skills and integrate it into another um, type of nursing yeah. field. Yeah, yeah. And you have you have you have an interest in public health as well. I see you went, you're going on to do um, graduate graduates in um, mm -hmm. public health. Yes. Um, so I went into public health. It was a fully online program. Mm -hmm. um, to be completely honest, so I did enjoy the public health aspect in nursing. I think what um, really drove me into it was COVID and the pandemic and just seeing how the disease kind of spread from one population to another and how that just moved super rapidly and how it yeah. impacts everybody. So I would say that was a major contributor to doing school, but um, and going back to your challenge question, I would say that was also another challenging thing, just balancing yeah. your work life and school life. But yeah. 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 So I have a question regarding you going straight into doing a graduate degree. Yeah. Did anyone discourage you? Yes, I would say <laughs> it wasn't, I didn't receive any direct discouragement where mm -hmm. somebody told me you can't do this, but it was more, I guess the word is backhanded where it was implied that I maybe didn't have the proper skill sets or the proper knowledge to pursue a master's degree. But um, a lot, one of the professors that I worked with, she, I remember in one of her emails, she had said that, you know, maybe the program would be too fast for me too because, mm -hmm. exactly, because I had just graduated and because I was still kind of new to my nursing career but I just remember being like okay well watch me you know we'll see where this goes and eventually I graduated in May of 2023 mm -hmm. um, but it was just a big thing of me knowing how to balance my schedule and making sure that okay if I had work a certain day I would get x y and z done um, for school so that I wasn't behind or having professors have to email me being like hey you need to catch up on this certain yeah. 
No? Yeah, yeah. I ask that because I, I realize I know, actually, mm -hmm. I should say I know that it is not generally encouraged uh, for people to go into, you know, um, advanced education right right after very right. often people say oh, you don't have enough experience yet right. I don't know if I, I you know I subscribe to that way of thinking because mm -hmm. you know <laughs> you know when you're ready right <laughs> you yeah. know when you're ready and you know yeah. what you know um so that, yeah. that I asked that's the reason I asked you that 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 question mm -hmm. uh, so you from my perspective really are a pretty new nurse right but you've done a lot. You've been a nursing assistant. You've worked in, def in different fields. Um, you've expanded your knowledge beyond the typical traditional role into public health and all of that. What would you like to see change? You're here. You're on the threshold of this. In the next, what would you want to see change? Um, just as you had said, just being kind of new in the nursing field, I think I would love to see a, I feel like I've seen the notion where older nurses eat their young nurses in a sense where um, I've experienced and I've had friends tell me that they would be at work and they would have older nurses not want to help them as a new grad nurse because they're tired or they just don't want to, you know, be the person mm -hmm. to guide us. So I think I'd love to see the idea of, you know, just helping everyone, no matter at what age, what stage you are in the nursing career. I think as new nurses, we need and require the proper support and the proper assistance to, you know, go from square one to continuously progress as a strong nurse. And I think that that's not done unless you're in a healthy work environment, unless your coworkers and colleagues are also there to assist you and provide whatever resources it is. So I think I would love to see the, you know, that kind of notion change where all the older nurses and experienced nurses are actually glad to help the new nurses as opposed to being just closed off and not wanting to help these new grads. Um, and I always think about how every nurse was always once a new nurse. We all were once very lost. So I think that that's a very important thing that should be changed moving forward. It's it's interesting. I mean, that 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 comes up so often Mm -hmm. um you know bullying and the, the eating their young thing and I I often think that it is interesting that we as a group as nurse if you ask any nurse so once they, we want to go all out of our way to assist our, our patients mm -hmm. and I'm not sure why that stops at our patients at times right. <laughs> and not exactly. with our you know doesn't spill over into our colleagues but yes I mean there are there are many nurses who are mm -hmm. who are not like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to give the impression that that you know all nurses are like that or the majority yeah. are, but every pretty much many nurses have experienced it though. So right, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. um, so as a recent grad, what advice do you think you want to give someone who wants to get into nursing now? You have gone through the fire because you went through COVID and all. <laughs> oh yeah, it was awful. Very bad. <laughs> so <laughs> having come out of it unscathed or at least not obviously burned, um, what advice would you want to give someone now who wants to go into nursing? One advice that I will always emphasize is make sure you ask questions. I think that it sounds very vague, and I know it's easier said than done, but a lot of times I feel as though we are hesitant to speak up or hesitant to ask other experienced nurses, hey, how do I do this or what should I do next? Because you don't want to seem like you don't know what you're doing, especially when your hands are, you know, taking care yeah. of patients and patients' yeah. lives. So I think that definitely don't be afraid to ask questions, whether it's a colleague, whether, you know, even a nursing school, a professor. I think these are the best ways to gain networking, networking. Um, and just, um, you know, gain, kind of building and developing relationships with people within the field. And with that being said, you can kind of take that and then use that as a resource and ask questions and make sure that you're not lost and you're kind of going in the right path. Because with nursing, especially being a new grad nurse, I feel that people expect you to, once you say you're a nurse, people expect you to know everything, you know, every single thing. So <laughs> I think that 
that's one of the advice that just to reiterate and emphasize is always ask your questions. Don't be afraid to utilize the resources around you. Um, and yeah, I would just say that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is important, and and we, I, in fact, we just I just talked about the 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 you know nurses eating their young right before then, and that's probably one of the reasons people are hesitant to ask, because exactly. sometimes they're made to feel um silly, um mm-hmm. but 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 there is no such thing as a, mm-hmm. as a as a question that you cannot ask, as you said, particularly you're dealing with people's lives with other right. people's lives. And I will add that one thing I've learned from a nurse that I had for clinical, she used to tell us that a dangerous nurse was a nurse that thinks they know it all. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I've kept into my mind. Um, so yeah, so definitely yeah. ask questions. You're not alone and you'll never, nursing is a very ongoing learning experience. So you're yeah. always learning everything. Thing ever. Yes, yes. And it does not matter how many, how long your 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 um nursing lifespan has been, there is something to learn every single time. Mm-hmm. Um, as you said, it's an ongoing thing. What would you say if you had to being again <clears throat> um a young nurse, what would you say is the most essential quality of a nurse at this point in your nursing career? If you had to describe it in just one word, what would that word be? I would say compassion. Mm-hmm. I think that compassion is very crucial in the nursing field because we have to be able to empathize with patients and their families, no matter what they're going through. A lot of it is communication and I feel as though a lot of times nursing may be portrayed as something physical where you're taking care of them hands-on, but it's also an emotional aspect where not only are you helping with helping them with their wound care, but you also have to be there and give them reassurance. We're here to encourage them and provide meticulous care. So I would say compassion. Compassion is very prominent in this field. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm glad you brought up that it was absolutely much more than physical. Mm-hmm. Uh, physical is what our our the person that we're taking care of is what the, our customer or our um consumer sees. Um, yeah. But physical is like this much, and we are actually towing this mm-hmm. much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's much more than that. One of the things that uh, especially I want to you know bring up bring up to you now is um the issue of self care. Right. Mm -hmm. You're coming into nursing at a time when we are actually talking about it. I came into nursing at a time when I think, you know, that that never was mentioned. And in retrospect, I think that if if I even spoke about it, it would have been someone would have looked at me as as like, what do you mean you're in the equation? Right. (laughs) So what does it mean to you? I would say self-care to me overall is holistic. I think that it, excuse me, it involves the mind, your body, um, those who surround you. So I think that, for instance, like when we get our nails done or when we go get a massage, those are great self-care things you could do during your self-care, which obviously can impact you and help you a lot. But I think a lot of times that it also involves a mental aspect where maybe it can involve you journaling or writing down what you have planned for further dates and scheduling because yes we can get our nails done or get a massage but that is just the one hour part of it where we're like oh, we're, we feel relaxed but then when we go home it's like is everything are the issues or your self-care issues are those targeted but I don't think they are. So we need to, I would say self-care is really finding the root factor of what is causing, you know, these issues or what is causing you to feel upset or stressed out. So not only is it the maintenance, like the nails, the hair, that type of stuff, but it's also digging into the emotional aspect of, are you really okay? So that could a lot of that for me is like being active. I try to go to the gym, not always, but I try to. 
um, being active, even if it's going on a walk, clearing your head. Mm -hmm. um, or for me, I also enjoy journaling. So I like to write in my journal how I feel, what made me feel upset and how I can improve on it. And that allows me to kind of be vulnerable and open up, not to anybody, but just to myself, even in yeah. the Right, just um, discuss how I'm feeling and how moving forward I can, I can improve on that so that I have more positive outcomes and better days, and that ties along with like getting your nails done and your hair and all of that. So it's just a whole multitude of aspects, I would say. Is yeah, so yeah, yeah, and I ask I ask this of almost every every nurse because <laughs> so I say I really. Uh, it, it's so easy to get sucked into doing stuff that we can a, neglect ourselves and be often when we think of taking care of ourselves we think mm -hmm. of something superficial right um which you know it needs to be a lot more than that i agree yeah it needs to be a lot more than that yeah so before we go is there any any last words you'd like to leave us with I would just say some last words to leave everyone with is to make sure to use your resources around you. Never hesitate to ask a question. It definitely is very scary, but a lot of times you'd feel better knowing that you've got some reassurance or proper assistance than to go kind of maneuver in your own way. So definitely networking is important. Just, you know, even if it's mm -hmm. your or after you graduate reach out to them and ask them for advice or your colleagues or even you know other classmates that are in the same route as you so I would say those are my last words to leave everyone with <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so much for that and and I would just add to that that even beyond that there are so many nursing organizations out there and so many groups yeah. um, mm -hmm. on, on areas of interest you know, even if you stayed quiet in a group and just read everybody else's comments, mm -hmm. you would get something from it. <laughs> right, exactly. It's definitely yeah. very important. But yeah, um, I would like to say again, thank you for being able to speak with me. Um, it's my pleasure to be on this Zoom call with you and also get some experience or insight from you as well. So, yeah. Thank you so much for that, Jeannie. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs> All right.